morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for, for keeping everybody waiting. Not sure what happened to the our Zoom link. But uh, uh, a very big thank you and welcome to uh, Dr. Sharifa. Uh, Dr. Sharifa, you are from the Research Fellow, Cyber Security Digital Industrial yes. Revolution, a senior yeah. lecturer, Faculty of Defense, Science and Technology uh, for the National Defense Ministry of Malaysia. Right. So that, that's as much as I know about uh, your profile. Uh, I'm not sure whether you are also uh, advising our national defense for Malaysia, but uh, <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will leave that to you. Uh, I will pass the floor to you now because we are really late by 20 minutes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So uh, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Shima. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let me share the slide first. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I can share screen. You should be able to share because uh, I've already made you co-host. Okay. Can you can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the introductions, uh, Mr. Kalim. So, uh, first of all, uh, Assalamualaikum and Salam Sejahtera to all. And a very good morning. I know, I know that today in KL is a bit gloomy. Um, I switch off my aircon because it's a bit cold. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some of the information uh, and then talk about the cyber awareness and then um, how we can look into the phishing emails because most of, most of us, even the small kids, they are using emails now. Um, since pandemic, even little kids like my daughters, um, how old is she like? Yeah, 10 years old but now she already have emails because uh, during pandemic they they use emails they use whatsapp uh, they use other social media to talk to their teachers and then communicating um, about uh, the school work so i believe a lot of uh, emails uh, subscriptions has increased uh, since pandemic not only for us like the adults but also to the little kids okay so um my concerns now is about the phishing emails. Um, I remember when the, uh, my kids, uh, they have the Gmails and also uh, the school emails. They were like very excited when they found out they just win something. Like, oh, I win something today. It's like uh, from this uh, a Microsoft. They're saying that if I um, subscribe or I click the link, uh, they will give me uh, some uh, bonus and then they were very excited when they even get information about uh, because they are very into uh, gaming so uh, for example they get information uh, or emails related to mobile legends they're like oh if i'm using the mobile legends this one then i can buy uh, some uh, guns or anything something that I, I'm not really into mobile gaming. So they are very excited. So I think phishing emails is very important for us to talk about, not only to adults, and also, but also to the small kids. So they know what kind of emails that is um, genuine email and also what is kind of email that is actually a phishing email. Okay, so uh, before I go deeper into phishing emails to the cyber awareness and then um, how can we counter measures uh, phishing emails? Uh, let me share a bit about uh, myself. Okay, so I started my career um, at a quite young age when I joined uh, UTP, uh, University of Technology Petronas, as a lecturer. At that time, I have a zero industrial experience. I was, um, I was uh, doing my bachelor, and then um, they have the talent scouting um, coming all the way from Malaysia to my university. They have uh, some interview then they say, okay, uh, I would like to hire you as a, because uh, UTP was a very young, like, young company, uh, a young education industry. They were like looking for some lecturers. So I say, okay, I want to join. It's a good opportunity. 
So at that time when I joined them, I don't have any um, industry experience. So I found it quite hard for me to explain things which I never do. I can talk about how to create a database, how to do the, the coding, how you do um, uh, the, at that time we were talking a lot about the um, Y2K, okay? How to make sure that the computer is not shut down when we move from 1st of January 20, uh, 2000 from the 1999. It's like um, those kind of thing. I can I can talk uh, based on the theory, the experience doing the codings and doing the database, but I cannot tell my students um, based on the industry experience. So then while I'm doing my PhD, so I decided to dive into the IT industry. So I quit UTP. Then I started working in Indonesia. So at that time I was um, working with uh, two startups actually. And then I led field of systems development projects. And then I involved with the IT internal auditing. Um, a few years ago, after getting, I think it's quite like 10 years I've been with the industry. Then um, a few years ago, I decided to come back to Malaysia. And then I joined UPNM, okay, University of Hana National Malaysia as a fellow researcher here yeah, in the cybersecurity and industrial revolutions uh, industry. Uh, this is quite challenging. This is my, uh, I not only talking about developing the projects, uh, not talking about only uh, doing all the codings and everything. Now uh, I want to look into more on the cybersecurity. Okay, so because I believe when we, when we were young, um, when we are doing all the developments, applications and everything, uh, part of the leaking is uh, the security part. Okay, because what we do is only password, uh, people put in the password, that's all. That, that, that's, the, that's the thing that we think that the secure enough our application. But if we look into uh, the um, uh, current, okay, situations, uh, cyber security is very important. Okay, <clears throat> so after that, um, I involve a lot with the project with the cyber security and also uh, data analytics because we are doing data analytics as well over here. So, uh, and then before pandemic, I was a visiting professor in Eurocomp, uh, Bayard France, um, under the digital security departments. We did some uh, projects over there, uh, looking into the network security. And then after that, um, I'm also attaching uh, to Zeta Technology, which is a um, uh, uh, business solutions company, uh, focusing on the data and AI and uh, productivity and also we are focusing on the learning academy for the talent pool. Okay, so my current interest is more on the information science and also the blockchains. Okay, blockchains, people talking about the blockchains, what is blockchain? So I want to know what is blockchain and how to play with the blockchain and how can blockchains actually helping us in securing uh, information on, on this cyber um, atmosphere and then my new passion is playing ukulele. Uh, that's my new thing. I, I, I tried the other day uh, before Raya, uh, play some ukulele songs, uh, so play some uh, Hari Raya song using ukulele, but I'm still beginners. I don't really know how to do the uh, playing with capo and everything. So I think that's all about me. Uh, there are many things that I've learned and then I'm, I'm very happy to share with you. So let's look into today's um, talk about the cyber awareness. We're gonna talk about the cyber uh, phishing email and also its countermeasures. But before that, can uh, I have um, one minute because uh, somebody asking to join, but they cannot use the link that provided on the poster. Okay. And what I did was I I copied and paste the link in the in the chat, Mr. Sharifah. Ah, okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. 
you just okay. share it to your colleague? Yes. Okay, mm, can I proceed? Yeah, please go ahead, thanks. So this is the recent email that I received um, as uh, Mr. Clint um, have the... So you hit the jackpot actually, Mr. Clint. <laughs> I'm part of the Cybersecurity Malaysia. So we um, not Cybersecurity Malaysia, the CSM, but we are part of the government so that I'm giving my um, skills and experience in the cybersecurity. So we are part of the NAXA. And then this is the email that I received. Um, I think it's last week, okay? Last week I captured and then I sent it to the group. It was the first time I saw it's like search epnm.edu. So the, we are, few of us is under the set, okay? And then uh, this is uh, Suraya Binti Muhammad. This is actually the real person. And then this is the real email of her. Okay, and then it's got the attachment. It's, it's just saying hello, give us some uh, document uh, to download. Um, and then uh, I was like skeptical. Uh, why is this? Is it a real email or not? Uh, is it just a phishing email? Okay, so I captured this, I sent to our group, and then yeah, based on the, our, of course, if you look into here, you can see that the um, emails is not a valid email. And one thing, and then when we do some of um, tests and checking on the emails coming in, the incoming emails and everything, we find out that uh, this Lucia No is uh, trying to uh, get in uh, to our network and then uh, is actually sending. Um, about uh, for more than 10 emails uh, to people in UPNM, okay? Just to get attention before uh, we as a user, if we don't really be being careful, we might download, okay? Or we might click uh, any of the link here. So once you did that, then uh, there's another, another story where your network could be compromised later on. Okay, so so this is really happening. Okay, so if we look into the statistics, okay, the malware sites, the phishing sites, we can see that over here there's an increment of the uh, phishing sites. It's increased a lot. Okay, so if we can see that ninety three per ninety three percent of the social attacks are phishing related. People say there are about 15 billion spam emails that sent daily. Okay, 45% of them is actually spam. Okay, the one that I receive is actually spam, but I always check my spam because sometimes um, some email just go to the junk. Okay, and then the 45 that they think um, is spam, but some people believe or some researchers think that it can be closer than 75%. So we can see there's a lot of uh, email, um, phishing emails, uh, the spam emails. We can see that it stay in our inbox, okay? So an analysis, there are more than 55 million emails reveals that one in every 99 email is a phishing attack. So the problem is 97% people cannot identify a phishing email. Okay, we get emails a lot. Okay, as I said before, when uh, my kids experience when they have the emails, they are very happy when they get the mobile legends email saying that you download this, you get um, more points or you can buy other things. So little kids or even us sometimes are very excited. Um, and getting all a lot of uh, bonus and stuff, is it? So, but the problem is we can identify, how can I tell my daughter, this is not uh, correct, this is wrong, this is uh, totally a phishing uh, scam email, okay? So what is phishing? Okay. So phishing is one kind of social engineering attack in which a bad actor, it possesses as a trusted, 
a reputable source and it sent some um, what we call it fraudulent digital image uh, messages uh, such as emails or text message okay the first intent when they are sending this fake uh, message for example okay they try to manipulate um, individuals into revealing personal um, information or some of the protected information we believe that there are a lot of information as we are working in this kind of environment interconnected with each other there are a lot of information or sensitive information are going on it's either stay in your laptop your computers or your tablets or your handphone or it can stay on the servers or it can be everywhere on the clouds as well okay so that's one of the things why the phishing is happening another one is uh, the bad actors okay like the email that i got previously from luciano so it, he could be try uh, I, i'm not try, saying that uh, the head, the bad actors is he it can be he or she okay so but the persons could have the intentions of trying to gain an authorized access to the system based on uh, the download or the link. Okay, you can see the email that I received before is a download. It's asking me to download a zip uh, files. So that's another thing. But sometimes they give you the link where you will bring you to another phishing website. Okay, so those are the things why phishing is happening. And then uh, most of the time they they possess themselves as a person that you know or you trust. Like before, you can see it's from Naxa. Okay, it's not from some company that I never had. It's Naxa. It's reputable, a reputable agency in Malaysia. Uh, and then it's actually part of the work that I'm working with as well. So those are the kind of information that they try to uh, use, and then try to get information from us okay so why should we care about this one okay phishing attacks as we can see every time we open our emails our gmails uh, our yahoo our outlooks okay we can see there are a lot of uh, spam emails okay so phishing attacks is actually the most common okay and then most of the time it's the most successful type of attacks so learning how to recognize okay this kind of uh, fake message or fraudulent messages we have to pay very close attention to the details okay, because we know that it can give us a severe consequences once we click on any hyperlinks or we uh, download any files it, it, once you download we don't know it could be a malware it could be a virus it will attack uh, the, uh, your laptop or even worse, it will just sit quietly in your network until it get all the information about your finance, about your uh, sensitive information, and then after that, it start doing uh, the attack. Okay, so it can be the devil in all the details. Okay, so once you get the phishing emails, remember never download any hyperlink. Uh, never click on. Uh, never never click on the hyperlinks and never download any files and then uh, remember as well if you are in a company uh, using uh, business emails always report any phishing attempts to the IT departments um, so they can um, send at least a notification or a reminder to other staff about this kind of attack okay so phishing is not only about emails it can be the text messages i um believe few months ago i think like uh two months ago i was giving a talk uh, to the peacekeeping uh malaysia and then they were like saying oh i received uh message saying that uh, he, he received a message from a friend uh, asking for money and then uh, then giving the uh, what is it the 
all the details about the accounts uh, and how much that he needs the money and everything. But when he uh, called the friends and then the friends said, oh no, it wasn't me. And I will never ask you money. And then I, um, it's like, it's some people that trying to do some phishing text messages. It's not only uh, using your WhatsApp, not only your on social media, like, um, what is it? Social media, like Instagram. Um, it's also happened in the Telegram. Somehow people can use your Telegram and uh, use your phone numbers, possess you as um, the owners, and then sending messages uh, to friends, okay, asking some money. Okay, so that is we consider fishing as well. Okay, so if you get any messages from the friends but uh, asking money okay so you better call them in order to know whether uh, the person is actually needing the money or is actually just a scam for asking money okay so <coughs> let's look into this uh, sample phishing email <laughs> It won't this email for you. You can see it's uh, saying some uh, new messages. I receive uh, there's a legitimate looking source. Okay, but the domain is not your uh, quite your work email. Okay, subject is urgent uh, with the spelling here um, misspelled. Urgent IT updates, a software vulnerabilities. Okay, it's giving you one uh, updates so file. And then saying, hey, uh, good afternoon, Tom. So a vulnerability has been identified in a big name software, okay? That allows an attacker to record calls and video from your computers without your knowledge. So please install the attack update by the end of the day or your workstation will be locked, okay? So we have also created apps for all employees to determine if they have been affected by this vulnerability uh, so click here to run okay. the apps okay click here so sincerely a boss man your company IT department so when we look here um, it's like legitimate right so but if we look closer we can see there are few uh, wrong on this email Okay, first, there's a tone of a sense of urgency. Okay, saying that you have to install the update by end of the day, and then your workstation will be locked. Okay, it's asking you to do it very quick. Okay, and then if we hover on the hyperlink, we can see this is uh, some of the wrong uh, link. Okay, it's a fake link. And then if we look into the domain of the senders, okay, it's a wrong sender server. Saying it's the same company, but it's not your company uh, emails domain. And then there is some uh, typo, okay? The urgent, the, the, the means, okay? The vulnerabilities. So those are the things that we can do some detection on the phishing emails. Okay. If you have any question, uh, please uh, just, is it gonna type or? You, you wanna are doing, you are doing fine actually, Dr. Okay, okay. Actually, all, the, all of us <laughs> are resolving resolving all this. <laughs> because everybody's just quiet. I just thought I'm making you doze off. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are all eyes and ears. <laughs> okay, good then. Thank you. Fishing emails is very important. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so this is how some of the tips how to detect the phishing emails. Okay, if you look into this one, okay. Um, we have this email from uh, afu at gmail.com to you, okay? Uh, importance update about your regarding your union membership. And then you were saying about your customer, you have received an importance update. Okay, it means that uh, this is some sense of the urgency there. Okay, you have to do, okay? 
and then regarding your union membership you can view the update online by okay so they will give you some instructions okay uh, you want you have to visit this hyperlink okay as i said before you have to hover the hyperlink okay if the hyperlinks look a valid then you can click but it doesn't look valid or it's totally different from what is stated in here then it means it's just a fake or a, it's a phishing uh, websites okay and then it's asking you to sign it with your user id and password and then select the service update so most of the time when they asking you to do some stuff okay almost of the time they will uh, bring wow. you to the phishing websites or this, the fake websites and asking you to put your ID, your password. And then once you put your ID and password and they started to get all the information because they already have your ID, they already have your password. Okay. So this is the things that you have to look. First, the sense of the agency. Okay. It's, important updates you have to do it now you have to do it by the end of the day you have to do it uh, quickly or otherwise you cannot use the software anymore okay so another one is always giving you either the hyperlink or the files okay when you have the hyperlink or the files you have to look into whether they are valid or not okay and then once you bring them, they bring you there, then they will ask you more information. So sometimes they just ask you other information uh, to say that, okay, we already blocked your membership. Now you have to give me your ID, your password, and um, probably some, we have, uh, what we have that one, um, the seek now, the secret uh, passcode right so that's another thing that they might ask then we uh, being uh, naive then we might give all the information to them okay this is some of the tips that you can use to detect phishing email but let me show you some other things that you can look into to detect phishing emails okay another one is the uh, sender domain Okay, for example, here it's saying it's PayPal, but the domain is not uh, in the, uh, the service. Okay, not uh, paypal-australia.com.au. Okay, and then look into the subject. Okay, it could be some suspicious on the subject. Okay, your account has been, um, been limited or have been locked or you cannot use your account anymore okay that kind of uh, subjects usually will get our attentions first right so then after that we're gonna look into the contents okay a check on the contents do you really have the paypal or not because i usually get a lot of email about paypal but i don't have paypal account okay so uh, that's one of the thing. And then another thing, as I said, there is a bad grammars. I put here and there. Um, so that's another thing that you can look into. Uh, and then sometimes um, in Malaysia, sometimes they just translate, Google Translate uh, from English to Bahasa Malaysia. So when you read, it's like, is it really Malaysian or is it doesn't sound sounds like Malay Malay language because it's just I don't know if you if I believe some of you been doing the translation using from English to Malay you can see the difference okay and then always always when you have the link this is very important link you have to hover on the link okay check the link whether is it the link that is actually PayPal or is another link. This is giving you some uh, IP um, address, but usually we don't do that. It's PayPal, they will give you the paypal.com and something. Okay. So there's another thing, um, another email example that we can look into. Uh, this thing uh, talking about, uh, uh, about the Zoom. Okay. So Mr. Rick, been using zooms a lot 
Okay, so you think, uh, okay, meeting via MSU Zoom. So we have to check first, read, okay, and then uh, usually Zoom don't send uh, like this. They don't usually use uh, my name, he said. Okay, when, okay, there's something wrong here. Hello, Rick. Okay, it's using my names. And then it's talking about information that you have to provide regarding the Zoom forward related. Okay, due to increased use of Zoom for online teaching, most MSU staff and students are increasingly facing a connection problem. So MSU IT service is asking them uh, to upgrade Zoom subscription and making changes to balance administrative and also academic use. So uh, it's like the changes will affect how and when you can use the software. It's asked you to do it very soon, is it? So automatically to your Zoom account on Friday, November, November 5th, okay? So you have to do it now, uh, otherwise you cannot use your Zoom. Uh, you, you can do it uh, later, but then, of course, if, if you not do it soon, then you cannot use the Zoom anymore, okay? So then the other things, they will ask you um, to make uh, some information, okay? Necessary information always asking you to put uh, information in this link, okay? To log it, okay? And then, uh, which is for Rick, this is quite weird because he's already logged in. Why you ask him to log in again and then giving you all the information. But as I said, this kind of events always and always giving you some familiar information or reputable uh, sources, okay? This one is using the real logo of PayPal. This is a make it happen, which is I think uh, is the one of the IT consultants for the MSU IT. Okay, so those are the things that we can look into as well. Okay, it's not like once we have the emails, we just read through, scan, and then after that, okay, um, I have to log, I have to put my information, uh, upgrading. Uh, free or not free or payment or otherwise it will happen to something to my computer or I cannot use the software then I just click the link okay so don't do that because that's very dangerous okay and there are uh, another tips that you can look into there are seven signs of phishing emails okay first this is based on the uh, Salutations, okay, generates greetings or no greetings at all. Okay, first, and then the second you can look into is asking or requesting a personal information over the emails. Seems like you are required to use this form to update your login information immediately. So <clears throat> they are asking some of your um, personal information, okay, which is they are not supposed to. Okay, and then there's a button with the hyperlink to the unfamiliar uh, websites. How do we know it's familiar or not? You have to go to the websites, hover it, okay? Uh, don't go to the website, go to the link, hover on the link, and then we'll see the name of the websites. If it's um, a valid uh, website emails, then yes, you can do that. Uh, if it's not valid, then don't click on the um, websites, okay? Uh, sometimes they have the attachment. We have to check on the attachment. Most of the time, if they have the exe, which is um, application, uh, don't do, don't download, never download the exe. Okay. Uh, it remind me one time that um, during my Yahoo, I don't know whether this guys probably still young. I'm already uh, young at heart. Anyway, so when my time we are using a Yahoo and then that time there is no Gmail yet. So I believe uh, there was one uh, time we hit uh, by the I love you uh, virus. So I was like receiving emails, uh, attachment with the I love you and then we click is actually a virus there. Okay, so it's just, yeah. It's just hitting uh, our Yahoo. My Yahoo, will, I never can can uh, get back my Yahoo uh, 
emails until now. Uh, even I tried to get my uh, emails that one, and then uh, yeah, it's also attacking my laptop at that time. So just by one click, things will change everything. Okay. Another thing that you can look into at uh, the fifth signs is to look into the from. Okay. So the domains of the senders, uh, whether is it the same uh, company that they are sending or is it specific? Okay. And then, as I say, you have to hover your mouse to reveal the misleading uh, URLs. Hyperlink, if like this, this is the hyperlink. We call it hyperlink because it's just the blue, okay, color. And then when you hover it, you can see the name of the uh, websites. Okay, and then another thing is always have a spelling or the grammar mistakes. So your login information immediate, immediately or could be some other probably the requires wrongly spelled and everything. Okay, so any questions so far? Hi, Dr. Sharifa. I think if you look at the chat, there is at least three questions. Uh, yeah. Do you like us to read it out to you, Dr. Sharifa? How to avoid. Okay, I know, no, it's okay. okay. From Yi Bon Yi. Hi, Yi yeah. Bon Yi. And is this, that's, that's the first question, right? Yes. From Yi Bon. Hi, Yi Bon. Okay, how to avoid receiving these phishing emails or even block them from flowing into our mailbox. Ah. <laughs> okay, you can block once you receive them. But to avoid receiving uh, phishing emails is uh, quite hard unless uh, you're using Outlook. Because I'm using Outlook as well as a business uh, email. You can put rules over there. Okay? Um, like some... Uh, uh, rules saying the senders domains okay you can put the rules over there but to totally cut out uh, the phishing emails flowing into our email is very hard most of the time as a researcher and also the um, academicians over here i always get emails telling me about publications about uh, uh, what about the conference uh, but then what i did is i just instead of hyperlink uh, click on the hi their hyperlink i just go to the website and then checking whether they are valid or not so to totally avoid receiving uh, phishing emails is no i i say is you cannot do it 100 percent. okay Another question from Juliana James. Hi, Juliana. Is there any website or platform where we can check or verify phishing email addresses? Um, so far that I know, we don't really have any, or I have never encountered any um, phishing email addresses websites that we can check whether is it correct or not but what you can do is you can go to uh, some uh, website like who am i and then check but i'm not sure whether you can check the phishing emails or not but that one mostly for the handphone numbers or the yeah phone numbers but probably could help you um most of the time, when they send you the phishing emails, they come from the either the person that you know or the company that uh, seems legitimate, like Microsoft. And then when you look into the domain of the phishing emails, like for example, uh, Sharifa at Microsoft.com uh, is supposed to be. But then, uh, phishing email could use like Sharifa at uh, micro. Uh, the soft is wrong spelling micro s uh, o t f dot com. Okay, it, when first 
uh, glance is look the same, but when we really look into it, it's actually wrong. So we have to pay attention more on the Sanders domain. Okay. Uh, Juliana and uh, another one from Meng. Hi, Meng. Meng Ji Lu. Okay, how to reject the fake website? <laughs> okay, have you ever encountered fake website before, uh, Meng? Hi, Meng. <laughs> Okay, I give you a simple tips of the fake websites. Um, well, fake websites usually, um, have you been to your Facebook? And then when you try to load uh, your Facebook, it's not showing everything. Okay, uh, the logo probably have the X, the image cannot be loaded. Uh, it's not as usual, normal. Um, <clears throat> Facebook uh, login. Okay, that's one of the criteria of the fake websites. Okay. So, but sometimes um, we can we just go because we thought because of our internet intermittence, uh, the network not strong, not good enough. So we just go and put our username and our passwords. So most of the time, uh, if there's a really fake website it will take your username and password. So how to really reject the fake website is um, you have to look into the hyperlink of the, or the address of the website, okay? So it's like before when I said Microsoft, is it? www.microsoft, uh, so the spelling is uh, M-I-C-R-O-C-O-F-T dot com not m i c r o s o t f dot com okay that's other thing that you can look into um, so to it's it's not really rejecting we just just don't go to their websites okay the Sharifa many organization these days use Gmail as their official email a bit challenging to differentiate yes correct I um, most of the company as startup company they use a gmail um, what you can do is <clears throat> probably you you can email them or reply their email but never click on the hyperlink or other information that they give on the contents okay but if you think that uh, those emails is very uh, valid you can go to their websites probably and checking uh, the uh, the reputables of the person is it the trusted sources okay so go to the website look into their directories and stuff to make sure that's the real persons that sending to you okay welcome thank you thank you dr sharifa okay is it juliana hi juliana yes hi thank you for asking question okay. welcome <laughs> Okay, uh, let's do some play, okay? Because we already know uh, about phishing emails, how very dangerous it is. And then once we click, we download, uh, things can change, okay? It can attack our network, it can get our information, even worse, it can go to our financial information. Uh, this is where we might lose some money over there, okay? So let's play something. Um, let me see whether uh, let me see. fishing quiz. Can you see the website? Yes. Okay. So we're going to play this. Okay. Um, whether you, sorry. <coughs> you can spot whether you're being fish or not. So take the quiz. 
let's say I put my name, uh, sunny at uh, abc dot com. Eh, sorry. Uh, com. Okay, so I give my name and also my uh, email. Those are okay. real or fake? <laughs> oh, that's a fake. <laughs> okay, I just make out my email, my names and my emails. Okay, let's get started. <coughs> so, let's start, okay? So, we received this email. Um, I, I stop my, this one for a second. My slide. And go first. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay. So let's start with this Google Doc email. Okay. So we want to know whether is it phishing or legitimate. So be sure to check out the URL by hovering or using long presses or to explore the address and worry none of the links has actually work. So uh, anyway, I received this email from Luke Johnson. Okay, Luke Johnson's uh, luke.jason8000 at gmail.com to me, sunnyabc.com, which is today, 11.04. Okay, which is about the subject is 2022 departmental budgets. Okay, so Luke share a link to the following documents. Okay, this is the link. Okay, so you say, hey there, here is the document you asked for. Let me know if you uh, need anything else. Okay, so you can open the documents here. The first thing, as I said, first, uh, what did we have to check? Whether is it phishing or legitimate? To who were over? Hover on over on the link. Okay, we can see the documents here, is it? Uh, 2022 department budget.docx. But if we look into the bottom, you can see it's actually go to the HTTP drive uh, hyphen google.com, look Johnson, look dot Johnson. Okay, same thing here. Okay, if we hover, we can see, can you see the Thing at the bottom, how can I show? Yeah, it's the bottom the left, right? Okay, yeah. yes, the bottom left. Okay, so we can see that's uh, Luke Johnson's uh, uh, Google Drive. Okay, what else that we can see from here? Uh, the email. Mm -hmm. The emails, Luke.jason. 8000 at gmail.com. Okay, so based on those things, do you think uh, is it phishing email or legitimate? Is it like a quiz now, is it? <laughs> Looks like phishing, yeah? yeah. Look like phishing. I click on phishing, okay? Yeah. Okay. So it's correct, it's actually fishing. Wow, you are good. So first, it's asking us to move uh, hover on the link. Okay, you can see that uh, it's actually insecure imitation of drive google.com. Okay, and then that's all. And then the Gmail before it could be, if, if you are working like me working under UPNM, it's supposed to receive uh, from uh, UPNM domains. But, if you could, uh, working in some startup company, as uh, Jasmine said before, uh, they could use the Gmail account as official uh, email account. Okay, <clears throat> let's say now we uh, receive a fax, okay? 
So this is the fact message, you know, reply. Admin, we usually have this kind of you no know, reply. Is it? <clears throat> Admin, which is no reply effects.com to me. Okay, this is uh, the details. Okay, you have received a one page fax. Okay, and then you have one page fax at 7 19 11 08 pm. Click here to view this fax online. Okay, so you can see the um, it's revealing the URL hyperlink and the effects HTTP. Um, effects.hosting.com.mail ru382.co effects that delivery 2017 and then some numbers okay and then you can see the logo here so what do you think is it uh, phishing or legitimate Uh, come participate. You can just uh, open your mic and you can answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What do you all think? I think it's fishing. You think it's fishing? Yeah. Why you think it's fishing? Do we receive text <laughs> via email or message? <laughs> Uh, this is a fax, right? This is a fax. A fax that we receive from know, the machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but this is not the traditional way of fax. <laughs> but also, when you hover just now, I yes. saw the email there is RU. I always get very worried when it's a RU email. Oh, Russia, is it? <laughs> oh, huh? oh, the yeah. mail RU. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, afraid of Russia now. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's correct. It's actually a phishing email. Okay. First, well spotted if you can look into this email, uh, domain, email domain. Okay. Mm. It's, it's CKX. CKS, not yeah. FAX. Okay. Another one is, of, of course, the uh, <clears throat> link itself. Okay. Mm. Uh, Dr. Sharifa, may I interrupt? Yes, yes. Uh, the first question, uh, the, the earlier question, the mm -hmm. earlier quiz, uh, mm -hmm. some people also go to their personal Google Drive and share some files, right? Yes, true. So uh, just now, it also came out as a Google Drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you okay. identify uh, a normal Google Drive or it must come with that person? The, the website of the, the Google Drive? Okay. Is because that one before is Google. Dash. I know. Is it Drive? And uh, let me. See. We have. Can we go back? <laughs> we try to go back. Okay. Ah, fishing. Yeah, fishing. I cannot take the quiz. This one is it? Okay, <clears throat> it's a good question. I just forgot to remind you. When when we look into this one, it looks totally this uh, legitimate or valid email address, right? Um, hyperlink, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. One thing that we have to look into for the secure uh, drive, uh, Google, they don't use HTTP only now. They use mm -hmm. HTTPS. Yes. Okay. So it's a missing S over there. All Thank right. you for highlighting up uh, because I, I forgot about that one. Okay. So most of the time now, if we go to like, if you can see here the phishing itself, okay, it got the S at the back. So it's more secure. Secure, okay. Okay, HTTP S, not only a HTTP. Okay. Thank okay. You. okay. Welcome. And another one is a uh, drive hyphen hyphen google i think drive google only or something i forgot there's there's one that um i i know when you put uh, i have to check that one first okay i couldn't give you a wrong information but the http have to be https okay so this one we already done okay 
this one again. Okay, so um, another question. Okay, so we going trip down a memory lane. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so remember the kindergartens from school or friends from school or something. Okay, sometimes we we not only emails but sometimes we receive this from our social media as well right so this guy or uh, this person okay uh, from pk867530 at gmail.com sending message to me saying oh i just want a photo of you and then i'm not sure who is this guy okay hey do you remember this photo okay so do you think this is fishing or legitimate so I already hover down. This is totally we don't know the person. TK, um, is it from the school or TK from the university or TK that we met on the uh, Starbucks or something? What do you guys think? Is it a legitimate song? Uh, fishing in this man. <laughs> So, the email doesn't look right. <laughs> doesn't look <good. laughs> the email doesn't look good. Okay, this is actually fishing. Uh, the, because the email, of course, is probably the person just like TK, is it? So, <laughs> this is the only TK numbers that are available at that time. <laughs> okay, so but when we look into the domains of it, okay, it's got HTTPS drive.google.com okay but it got dot download photo site uh, net, which is uh, another domain that they try to look like the google drive mm -hmm. okay it's look like a google drive but it's actually got some other domains that which is this mm -hmm. sitepass.net okay so sitepass is not a real google drive Okay, okay. So, ah, uh, this is email about the Dropbox. Okay, so that you are out of storage. So, I wonder whether you want to uh, upgrade it or not. <clears throat> okay, this is Dropbox, no reply, Dropbox mailed.com. Okay, Dropbox, no reply to me, January, uh, July 19. Your Dropbox has been stopped, assigned, uh, signs, signing. <clears throat> Hi. Your Dropbox is full and no longer sizing files. New files added to your Dropbox folder won't be accessible on your other devices and won't be back up online. So I have to upgrade your uh, Dropbox today and get one terabyte okay, of space and powerful sharing features. So this is the link. Okay, four other ways to get more space. Visit our Get More Space page. Happy Dropbox team, the Dropbox team, as if you need the biggest plan we've got. Uh, check out our Dropbox for business. Okay. <clears throat> First, what we have to check. Hyperlinks. Hyperlink, okay. We check the hyperlink at the bottom first. Dropbox for business. Okay, we have HTTPS, www.dropbox.com uh, business, okay. Get more space, another hyperlink. Um, dot com help backslash space backslash get more space okay and then another hyperlink https dropbox dot com slash buy okay so yeah. do you think is it a phishing or legitimate 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 hmm? legitimate legitimate yes it's legitimate because it's actually from the dropbox okay <clears throat> Okay, so this is Dropbox mail, which is legitimate, and then all the hyperlink is actually legitimate. Okay, <clears throat> you receive a new kind uh, of reports from the school. So usually their emails come from Sharon.MosleyWestMountSchool.org. Okay, so Sharon mostly send you an email, okay, to me about the 2022 financial activity reports. 
So good day Sunny, please find attach the 2022 financial activity report for your proposals. Thanks and regard, Ms. Sharon Mosley, Resmond Day School. Okay, so this is the file. So do you think is it phishing or legitimate? Legitimate. It's actually fishing. Okay. First, because the address is wrong, it's supposed to be westmountschool.org. Okay, but over here, westmountdayschool.org. Okay. So. And then, yeah, of course, we have to be, be, be careful when we open the, any uh, files. Okay. That's one of the things. Okay, uh, we have to look into the domains. <clears throat> okay, someone has been trying to access your account. Look carefully uh, before changing your password. So this is Google support sending to you. Okay. And then someone has your password. Hi, someone just uh, use your password to try to sign into your uh, Google account. This is some information, okay, from Slovenia, Romania, using Firefox uh, browser. Google stop this sign in that time. You should change your password immediately. Change your password. Best the mail team. Okay, so do you think? Uh, what do you think? Is it legitimate or phishing? Legitimate. Fishing or legitimate? <laughs> I can hear one saying fishing and fishing. Another one fishing. <laughs> okay, it's actually fishing. Why you say it's fishing? If you look at the link after dot com, there's a dash security setting. Mm -hmm. True. Oh. Okay. Look at the emails, it look like the URLs. Okay. So when we look into this one, we can see it's my account google.com, but then after that, it's asking you to go to security setting page.ml hyphen security.org. Okay, which is, uh, is might be a fake uh, uh, phishing website. Okay, to get your information, um, your password, and also your username. Okay. Okay, the Google support is isn't used, and then the domain is ml. So security not Google. Okay, <clears throat> two more to go. Okay, your account seems to be under attack, or is it? Okay, so Google is sending you again. Okay, no reply at google.support to you. Someone has your password. Okay, government, but attackers may be trying to steal your password. There's a chance this is a false alarm, but we believe we detected the government back attackers trying to steal your password. Uh, it happened uh, to less than 0.1% of Gmail user. We can't reveal what ticks us off because the attacker will take note and change their tactics. But if they are successful at some point, they could assess your data or take other action using your account to further improve your security based on your current security settings, we recommend you to change your password. So what do you think? Is it phishing or uh, legitimate? It's phishing, right? We can see over there, even it's using HTTPS, google.com, but it got the tinyurl.com. Tiny <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's correct. It's based on the real warning, but it links uh, to a fake login page. Okay. So this is the tiny URL. Okay. So this is the last one. You sign up for a travel planning service. Your oh, pandemic is already gone. So now let's go for some travels. Okay. So uh, you want you want them to scan your emails, but stay a close look. A uh, close look, okay. From the Google, hi Sunny, Sunny at abc.com. Trip it wants to view your email message and settings. Okay, this is a trip it. Okay, a lot of ways to do it. You may receive these apps. Okay, terms of service and privacy buddies. 
you can remove this or any other app connected to your account in my account. Okay, so you want to cancel or you want to allow? So what do you think? Is it um, phishing or legitimate? Phishing. Okay. So, no, this is actually legitimate. Because when you look into the hyperlink, HTTPS, okay, this is actually the trip it. Okay. So, what do you think of the, <laughs> this uh, quiz? So, we get six out of eight. So, it's not bad. Eh? <laughs> so, what do you think of the, the quiz? Can you next time detect your... Uh, phishing emails, if there's any. Try to. <laughs> they always are so clever in the way they send. <laughs> yes, I know. Let me share there's my one, screen. There's one more thing, Dr. Sharifa. You know, a lot of websites that we go, they, they will ask mm -hmm. us to allow their cookies. Yes. Cookies is another thing because uh, but one thing why they have the cookies because they want to make sure that every time they you put there they already have your information mm -hmm. and then they can load faster but um make a habit to, to delete the cookies or to we have the settings if you go to the website and then go to the tools go to the settings you can change the cookies Okay, but in and a then lot of, uh, website, they don't they don't allow you to access the website if you don't allow their cookies. <laughs> yes, you yes. Know? When I was in Europe, um, every every time I go to the website, you have to click on the cookies first. If you don't click on the cookies, you cannot go at all. But in Malaysia, we don't really like enforcing it. But over there, they like every time I just click something. I have to go to the cookies first. So what I did is after I go to the cookies and then I clean the cookies after I go to the website. Yeah, that's one of the things that you can do. That's very important as well if you go to uh, for the travel later. Okay, <laughs> since the last question was about traveling, when you look into the price of your airline, okay, uh, clean the cookies before you do your second uh, or your subsequent uh, search because then once they already know you already been there then they already give you some uh, uh, fair um, price and mm -hmm. then after that they will increase the price <laughs> <laughs> tips and tricks <laughs> that's a tips and trick so always clean the cookies before you're doing that okay i stop sharing this one first i'll put uh, my slide okay dr sharifa i have a question yes just yes. now regarding yeah. the quiz on the email to allow mm -hmm. the email settings, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, why do you allow them to access your email? Is it for like TripIt to send you some promos or what? what is the reason actually that you are allowing For the TripIt. Okay. Usually, um, some people, they are... Okay. Now, a lot of uh, websites, when you want to log in, they even ask you whether you want to log in putting your username your password and sign up and everything or what you can do is you can use your gmail or your google okay once you click on the google then it brings you to the uh it will give you that um, uh, permission first whether you allow that application to uh, attach to your gmail so every time you want to log in you just click on the Google part, then it will bring you to that one. It's just to speedy up signing up. But if you want, don't want to do that, then it's possible as well. But sometimes uh, the setting is like when we are doing the applications, right? Um, when we click on, the, for example, we if you have Androids or you're using iPhones, every time that we install any applications, they will ask you uh, about the settings, whether you want to share location, you want to share your privacy and everything. So if there are things that you don't really want to share, just untick that one. Same thing for the trip pick before. If you don't want to share any information uh, because you don't want to receive any promotions or any, any information from them, then 
just don't use your Google, okay? Or just untick uh, the settings. I have another question, Dr. Sharif. Yes, Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's say now I have shortcut. Like, let's say I forgot my password for some application mm -hmm. or something. And yes. then I go and uh, go to the shortcut, which is, let's say I use uh, Gmail. I mean, okay. Google. Uh -huh. Is it safe to always use that? Uh, because he will ask you, like, you want to go through Facebook or how do you want to access that website? So is it safe to just click on that shortcut to go with our Google account? Because he will ask you, right? When you click on it, it will ask you like which Gmail account you want to use, for example. Then you click which Gmail. And then automatically mm -hmm. it will ask you like continue as Juliana. Then you just continue, right? Yeah. Is, yes. safe? is it safe all the time or what's your advice? Okay. My advice is... My, I'm, I'm doing that one as well. Um, my advice, we're not supposed to use our Gmail, uh, any other application to attach to other applications. Because once the application being compromised, or our Gmail being compromised, somehow all the application that attach to it will be compromised as well. Um, yes. Most of the time, if like the three pits before, if because it's uh, talking about the travel, right? Most of the time when we are doing travel, we tend to put a financial information as well. Um, it could be our credit cards number, our debit cards number, or our bank accounts. That's very dangerous. So better uh, take like two or three minutes to do the sign up and then remember your passwords. I'll show you how to remember your passwords so after this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Other question? Yeah, yeah. question in the chat. Ah, chat, chat. In the chat. Oh, cookies on mobile phone. Ah, how to click cookies on mobile phone? You go to your um, uh, which which uh, hi Mel, Mel, which one you using? Using Safari, what is it we call it? Uh, Google Chrome. Now, if you're using Google Chrome, okay, you can go to the settings. I want to show you how to show you. <laughs> yeah, she uses Chrome. Okay. Okay, if you're using Chrome, you can go to the three dots down here. Uh, can you see or not? Uh, can I see? Use it again. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so my phone is keep. Uh, I okay. cannot detect can my phone. <laughs> okay, there's a three dots at the bottom. Okay. And let me see. Okay, there are three dots here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, three dots. Okay. Okay, the three dots here at the bottom. Okay, then you if you click on that one, it will bring you to the settings. Okay, I want to see. You can see or not. Okay, there are settings there. Okay, you click on the settings. It's very hard to do it on the other side. Okay, so there is a, a safety chair or privacy. You can do the clear browsing data. Clear browsing data. Clear browsing data, then you can change the cookies side over there. Okay? Okay, ma'am. I, I want to show you this one, but it seems... Okay. Ah, I have to do like this. <laughs> I have to be on my body. Okay. Let me check back. You go there. You click on the... Oh. On the safety chat. Okay, and uh, on the privacy, on the privacy, mm -hmm. and then you click on the clear browsing. There is a cookies over there that you can do and uh, clear the browsing, the browsing data at the bottom. She okay. uses the Android phone, but she said she will try to find it 
on okay. the Android. But uh, how, somehow you have to find the settings. Okay, find the setting, go privacy, and then clear the uh, browsing data. Sharifa, Suresha, I use maybe uh, uh, I others, others here may be able to use. I download an um, app called Clean Master. I don't know whether you heard of that. I download, oh, I, I download that and then it has got uh, built-in antivirus, a um, uh, few things in there. So even it, when too much of junk mail, uh, also it will constantly every day scan and it tells you, okay, delete there's too much of junk mail or too much of cookies or something um it's available on um, android but i'm not sure whether it's on uh, on apple apple phones okay. apple steve jobs too smart so maybe you don't use clean masters <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to chucho the rani affirmation <laughs> she uses the uh, style <laughs> just think just so I, I'm Chucho Rani actually, so I use Android. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I use, the, I'm not sure it's, uh, it's uh, Apple related, but Android uh, okay. is must, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, I'll check later then, so that I can use the, the <laughs> Clean Master. I already put in the chat. In yeah, case yeah. somebody want to try Clean Master, then it will be great as well. Thank you for sharing the information. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm learning something new than today. <laughs> Clean Master. Okay, the cool. other one you mentioned also, which I think I learned from Rani, is like who's called. I think the one, uh, if someone calls you, then if you want to know, nowadays we do a lot of scam calls. Eh? I mean, uh, we yes. all do. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so uh, I think Rani mentioned who's calls. I've downloaded that. They are one of the largest. Things, huh? Link uh, yes. billions of database, immediately yes. high, high accuracy, not always accurate, but highly accurate in that sense. Mm -hmm. True. I'm using that one as well because sometimes I don't know who is calling me. <laughs> like, oh, okay, it's actually scam from some bank. Banks like to, it's like, I don't know, is it really bank or is somebody else? But I never answer them. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to show you how easy um, okay. can you see my desktop yes, yes. okay i want to show you how easy okay to use uh, simple social engineering to do some hacking okay so it's not like you, for you to do it i mean it's for you to um see how how easy people can do this okay then we have to be very uh, careful about it can you hear the voice no oh. i think when you share there is a at the bottom there can is you? one share sound also oh share sound yeah. share sound so you have to unshare first no, no. unshare first. unshare yeah unshare, unshare first, first. Okay, when you share, it's going to click the Just before you click share, Dr. Sharifa, you'll see two yeah. boxes. Maybe Dr. Sharpa, you can maybe you can unshare and then when you reshare, then at the bottom there will be a Swadi yeah, screen. I there want will be two button, something like that. I want to stop share. Yes. And they all share sound. Yes. Okay. Yay. Yeah. 
to share computer please install the zoom audio oh, i have to install zoom audio Can you hear if I put like this? What's yes. fishing? Fishing is station, and basically, um, can you hear? Yes. Yeah, yes. 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 in a later attack. Let's do it. Um, you, you can we're tap again, Dr. Sharifah, can for your cell phone provider and see if... Yeah, just pull back. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm going to meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're going to have to be using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use the phone and internet connection. You want to do a sample of phishing call? What's phishing? Phishing is voice solicitation. And basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Okay. You, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so we could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm not on there either. So I thought when we got married, uh, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number. 5127. To set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry. So there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her set up. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Holy shit. So they they, <laughs> gave, they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're going to have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. <laughs> Very easy, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> The yes. worst is Dr. Sharifa. Nowadays, I mean, I think we all received that. Uh, they suddenly they say that they are calling from the the income tax la police station. They are calling from the what bank nagar. Some even say, oh, uh, they got a uh, some summons. Uh, you know, all kinds. It's wow. It's scary. It's scary. You know, yes. Yes. I received that kind of. <laughs> One as well. They say uh, the letters I got it from LHDN. They say they have to check my account, some um, uh, audit, audit, and then it was like in my hometown. And I was like, why is not in KL? Because I'm in KL now. And they say, oh, because you open your LHDN in my home in my hometown. Is it? It's like no, I did not. And then they just hang up after that. So yeah. It's either you can play with them or you might get played by them. <laughs> so be very careful. 
But you can see how easy that girl's changing everything. The it's other, just a very... other big problem is the love scams. People start losing two hundred thousand, three hundred. I, I really, you know, that's another shocking thing. So. Yeah, it's a lot of money. But yesterday, I, I went to um, uh, to Shahala, and I saw they have the big uh, TV screen on the road uh, saying like, "Beware of the love scam." And then they're putting a amount of money that been lost uh, last year, like millions, I think. Wow, it's a lot of money. And then, yeah, uh, love can happen online as well. Yeah. So yes. there's also something I like to share, Doctor Sharifa, because yes, uh, nowadays we have all these people who call us, like you said, from these different things, like uh, even mm -hmm. Suresh. So one of the ฟิกซ์อีสเดลอาสยูแคนยูเฮียร์มีแอนด์เดนอาสยูเอสอ่าฮะโอ้เดอะแอคทูลีเรคคอร์ดเดอะเยสแอนด์เดยูสยูร์
kind of oil. Oil is very expensive, right? <laughs> Ghee is very expensive. Now. <laughs> it's very expensive. It's very valuable. People willing to buy your information, okay? And then um, if people in that company don't have a really high integrity, they just collect and sell. And then we can see that some of our information is just everywhere. If you if you can look into uh, the dark web, they actually um, selling our information. Mm -hmm. So the integrity of the employee in that company is very important. And then the company that protecting or take, taking care of our information, they have to make sure they are, they safe. Uh, guarding our information uh, very good, okay? Uh, it could be not the insider, the one that taking the information, but it could be the outsider, okay? One of the way that the outsider can get into the company is by phishing emails. When we click on the uh, links or the fixed links or we uh, download some of the files from the emails, it could be some uh, malware. We can just stay quietly in our website and then after that, uh, slowly moving from one a place to another place, okay, until they get all the information. Then they start to do the attacking. Attacking means they're getting all the information. It's, it's possible. Everything is possible. Um, just just want to make you very scarce. Um, there are some application that they can just look into how you key, uh, how you use your keyboard. We call it key loggers. Okay, so it could be when you go to the Gmail. Okay, www.gmail.com. You put your password. Okay, username, your password, and everything. All the all the times that we click on this keyboard, every letters is actually captured. Okay? Wow. Yeah. Mm. So is there yeah. any app or software to protect us from all this? Okay. <clears throat> the software is always have to, like, that's one of the things. You have to stay up to date. Mm -hmm. We have to remember that not all software coming into the market is 100% uh, secured. There will be some loopholes here and there. Okay. Um, talking about Microsoft. They always get the updates as well. Um, uh, even the iPhones, okay, the Apples, they have the updates. Means when there are updates, there's something wrong with the previous versions. Okay, that's why they are updating uh, the latest versions. So stay uh, up to date. Make sure that our software is always at the latest versions. Um, even if you're using the operating systems, always at the latest versions as well. Okay. Mm. And then scan through our um, laptop, our tablets, because some people are using tablets, right? Or our PC. Okay? That's very important. Okay? Another one is uh, we want to make sure that when we use online, okay, never go to the place that, um, let's say we, most of us are now working um, yeah, during pandemic, we just go to the cafe or we go to Starbucks, putting, looking for the free Wi-Fi, isn't it? I don't want to use my data plans like over here. I want to use the Wi-Fi. What is the free Wi-Fi here? Then just put. And then uh, apparently some of the free Wi-Fi, mm. it can be some hackers. Okay, they can just put some free Wi-Fi and waiting for some people to use. And then after that, you go to your social media, put in your Instagram, your Facebook. You put your password over there, is it? Your username over there. Then even worse, you're doing your financial transactions, the banking transactions, using the free Wi-Fi, which we don't know who actually owned that Wi-Fi. Okay, that's very dangerous. If you want to do any business transactions uh, or any banking transactions or anything involve sensitive, uh, confidential information, never use free Wi-Fi. Or even better, never use free Wi-Fi at all then. Okay? 
use your data plan, uh, hotspot to your laptop. So that's the thing. Um, and then another one is um, login protections. You can use uh, multiple factor authentication. You can use uh, two level authentication to make sure that you are the valid persons that login or access to the application. That's the thing that you can do it. Like for example, when we are doing um, banking info, banking transactions, right? When you go to the Maybank to you to other online banking, they usually send you the pin, the TAC. So you have to make sure your TAC uh, is received, then you can make some uh, transactions. So it's not only login using username and password, but also um, there's another layer of uh, protections for you to log in. Okay. That's one thing that you can look into. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Voice suddenly gone. Uh, sorry. Okay. So another thing that we can do is to look into lock down your logins. Okay, every after you log in, especially using your office or sharing a PC with people, you have to log out. Okay, never put the logins all the time over there. And then when you have a doubt, okay, when you see the emails or messages, just if you think this is not a valid, just throw it. Okay, just delete. And then it will be a very good habit to delete your spam message. Okay, every time you got the spam or the junk email, just delete. It will save the carbons in the world for how many, uh, how, how we calculate the carbon. So that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, you own your online presence. Okay, it's Sorry, only supposed to be Sorry. yes, uh, yes. Are you sharing your screen? Yes, I see. Yes, I I'm sharing. Oh, cannot see. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. There must be something wrong. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let me stop first. I thought it's sharing. Oh, I can see uh. your holiday <laughs> already. <laughs> this one can see. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. I've yes. talked about this one before. Okay, I was talking about this one. Yeah. Okay. So, ah, uh, yeah, about get savvy about the Wi-Fi spots, hot spots before. Most of the time, it's possible go use your own uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, okay? Uh, use your data plans when you want to connect, when you are in the public. Uh, try to avoid using the free internet or the free Wi-Fi, okay? And back it up. Back up your information. Uh, make sure you have a 3 to 1 copy where 3 is um, back up your copies in the three different media, okay? To put it somewhere on the clouds is possible, okay, two different clouds and the other one is put it into the hard drive or something offline, okay, that's just back it up. And then uh, as shown before, you have to keep a clean uh, machine, okay. Some of us is already talking about, I discussed about the, uh, how we can uh, open up uh, some of the opportunity to the hackers to get into our uh, laptop, our PC, our servers. So we have to make sure that our uh, machine is very clean. Okay, do the scans thoroughly, uh, checking is there any weird uh, applications going on, uh, checking all the settings, checking on the privacy parts. Okay, if like um, you don't, usually most of the time we, we tend uh, to be to Instagram Megabulls or to Facebook, we sharing our locations. So sometimes when we share with others, okay, we 
uh, tend to tell them where we are at that place. And then uh, the opportunity for hackers is, is huge. They can just do anything they want. Okay? So that's one of the things. Uh, when you share, share with care. Think what, were you, are, what you are sharing. Okay? Is it uh, you are giving too much information um, to others? Okay? And then share like uh, when you want to share. Think how you put it into words like how you're going to tell your parents okay so don't share like whatever okay that's one of the things that you have to look into share with cares so basically cyber security is everyone's jobs okay not only our cyber security malaysia job but it's also our job it's not only our it department job but it's also our jobs okay so that's one of the things that we have to look into Interesting. The sad thing is many of our government ministries and agencies have been hacked many, many times. Over sometimes the same ministry over and over again and uh, can't understand why maybe people at Mampu or they cannot put in whatever security that the ministry's website or agency website keeps being hacked. Actually. Yes, true. Especially when we have some uh, misunderstanding with our neighbors. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things that you can see is it's really happening in our eyes, is it? But being hacked behind it, it's happened as well. If you ask me, is it um, any networks in the world is 100% secured, I will say no. There will always the loopholes here and there that people People find it uh, interesting to uh, or challenging for them to look into and then find uh, no. the way to, I don't know, it's either they go for fun, okay, whether, oh, okay, I get into this company or they do it because of the money, okay, but I believe most of the time now it's because of the money. That's be true. Uh, people say Malaysian hackers are among the best in the world. They can hack. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's why I have to ask the anonymous Malaysia. Eh? <laughs> next yeah, one of the next things. generation employment. <laughs> yes. Yes, the next generation employment is having the ethical hackers. If we talk about, uh, because it's just cyber awareness, is it? But oh. if you look into the higher levels now, um, yeah, in the military, we have the, the borders, right? The borders, um, Malaysia borders, um, Thailand borders, um, Indonesia borders and everything. That's very clear. That's physical. That's very clear. But if we're talking about the cyber space, it's borderless. Uh, nobody's on internet. Anybody can use internet. Okay, you can use internet in Thailand. You can use internet in Malaysia. You can use internet in uh, Indonesia. You can use it anywhere in the world. So, cyber cyber war, uh, cyber warfare is a very dangerous thing that we have to look into. Okay, because it's borderless, and then uh, how can we help each other? Uh, is Asian being attacked by some other uh, country? Okay, so that's the thing that we have to look into as well. Because basically, we don't really have a strong guidelines between the, um, cyberspace yet. Then we know that this thing happened. Um, we call it advanced threat, uh, ATP, advanced threat. Oh my god, P, I forgot. Um, it's been actually uh, hired and then groomed by, by countries uh, to make sure that we not only defense when we got being attacked uh, via cyber, okay, but we can also. Um, we attack them back if something happened. But of course, we don't say that Malaysia military attacking uses cyberspace. That's that's totally wrong because that's thing that we cannot do it. Okay, but then this kind of thing 
um, between countries and everything that when we look into what happened to the Georgia before, uh, Estonia, things happened. They attacked by cyberspace. They go for the um, electricity first. Lock down the whole thing. How they do it? They're using the cyber. Wow. Dr. Yeah. Sharifa, uh, yes. you, know, you may have heard about this. Um, in Belgium, there was this um, uh, bombing of the shopping mall. Uh, oh, I never heard. After all that, when the intelligence people uh, investigated about the Belgium, mm -hmm. what happened? They said, I don't know the true story, but just a briefly, right? They, mm -hmm. whoever the people behind, they, they created a simulation uh, online game. They created a simulation online game and they launched okay. it. And then whoever the targeted people that they have already employed to attack the Belgium uh, shopping mall and mm -hmm. bomb different places in the mall, uh, these people were coming onto the online game uh, and playing the simula simulated scenario. Okay. And so it, it seems that that is how the... Uh, employed bombers or terrorists mm -hmm. trained mm -hmm. to prepare their people before they went on that particular day into that Belgium shopping mall and started shooting and bombing and uh, yeah. quite a number of people wow. died. So, so they then uh, after the whole thing over, they just shut down that multi what, online game and mm -hmm. then they couldn't con find out who actually uh, organized that whole thing and whatnot. They just shut down the site. And everyone goes, you know, you cannot locate, it's gone, you know, it's gone. So, as you say, things getting too complicated, especially when it comes to bad things you want to do. Huh? So, I mean, mm -hmm. you highlighted the small things, but already big things are already happening in the world, yeah? Ransomware and bombing and, you know, yeah. all kinds of things. So, it, it's very scary, yeah? Yes, very scary. But it's scary if they now from the gamification they try to make it real in yeah and make it in the real situation. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully things are getting better. I don't know. <laughs> Just be aware. Of it. <laughs> be careful. In, in some ways, how can we as individuals? Uh, we not, uh, of course, not as much. Maybe a drop of knowledge, like what, because you go through so much for what you do. But we as individuals, uh, how can we uh, somehow protect ourselves, protect our organizations in that small way? You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you are okay, first is cyber awareness. That's very important. Because we want to make sure that people are aware this thing is happening. Okay. And wow. then in some of the company, uh, they do the cyber awareness like every week. Uh, not every week, every month. Okay. Or quarterly. And then uh, some company that I know, they even do this kind of phishing email. Okay. The phishing, the email they send uh, to the whole organization. And then they will see who uh, or which department is opening that link, okay? And then they will target that um, that department for the cyber awareness. So they will go there, talk to them. This is wrong. You're not supposed to do this. This is how you um, check or detect the uh, the cyber attacks and how you're supposed to do it. And then this is the mitigation of it, okay? Because usually when we are talking about cyber attack, is uh, is already done. Then we have to mitigate. Okay, if possible, we want to make it like it's not. It's not even close to us. But we already know it's already wrong. So we want to stop. We want to put the barriers there. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. That's the thing. You're welcome. Thank you for the questions. And thank you for some for the information that you give. I, I learned a lot today. I learned about the mas the clean master. I learned about the Belgians. Yeah, it's not only me giving the talks, but it's like <laughs> very good and <laughs> learning together. <laughs>
I think that's all for me. But if you want to have any um, information, or you feel free to contact me. Uh, this is my uh, UPNM email. Okay. Sharifabaya at upnm.edu. I think that's all for me, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, thank you very much. Interesting. Yeah, I think yes. we are done. Mm -hmm. I'm already more. taking you 15 minutes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we do a group photo, Colin. Yeah. Okay. yeah I think the doctor had to unshare before I see the whole screen. Oh, you, I went unshare. Oh, my sorry, sorry. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Okay. You have Dr. Sharifah in your paper. Yeah. Oh, that one when I was in France. <clears throat> When I was I was a visiting professor in France, I had a chance to go to Italy. Um, what is the name of the place? Uh, S. I, I don't know how to say it, but it was in Italy. It's near the river. It's very nice. I like it. Salemo, I think it's called. Ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Dr. Sharifa, how um, how uh, you M, how much uh, um, um, maybe in the courses that you all do, maybe maybe you can do a bit of promo for UPM uh, UPM in terms of the oh. related to this area, cybersecurity and so forth. Uh, how much of uh, courses or what not you all do? Maybe it might be very good for okay. students to go there and study in these areas. If Okay. Um, currently, I'm attached to the faculties, faculty science and technology, uh, defense. <clears throat> um, not only as a fellow researcher in uh, cybersecurity center, but I'm also the lecturers, senior lecturer, uh, senior lecturers in the faculty. <clears throat> in the faculty, we have uh, three different. Um, how to say? Three different. Uh, three different degrees or uh, departments, okay? We got maritime technology, we got uh, computer science, and we also got science and optimization, data science and optimization research. <laughs> okay, um, if you really learn, want to know more about the cybersecurity, you can sign up for the, uh, under the uh, computer science, we have um, AI over there, and then we also have the network, Okay, under the network, there is a ethical, um, ethical hackers. We teach you how to be hackers, but ethically, okay? And then we also tell you uh, about how to use some of the um, OSIM, which is open source for the intelligence, okay? And then those are under the undergraduates. Okay, we will also have the data science. Uh, we have data analytics, uh, machine learning, and everything. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> for under my centers itself, we have a few courses. We have mobile forensics. We have um, the OSINS training. We have the cyber threat intelligence and few others. <clears throat> so that one mostly we offer for people that have the background in uh, cybersecurity. Okay, so, yeah. Can, can you define ethical uh, hacking? Come again? Can you define what is ethical hacking? Wow. <laughs> hacking is a never ethical, actually, is it? <laughs> but to make sure that it's, <laughs> it's halal. <laughs> So we put ethical hacking there. So, so like, yeah, it's ethical uh, how to show them this is the way how to do the hacking, but you have to uh, do the mitigation of it. Okay, don't go just attacks. And then um, there's a certificate um, under CCNE, I think. They have the ethical hacking certificates if you want to get this, the professional certifications. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> so if you're using the uh, white hat, means you are the ethical hack. 
by using the red hat. So you are the bad uh, hackers then. The professional hacker. <laughs> I said that. Yeah. Can everyone yeah. on your cameras please yeah. so you can take a nice photo? Thank you. Really no time for makeup, lah. Otherwise, what I'm doing. It's okay, lah. No need makeup this time. Smile is your makeup. <laughs> yes, true. Mister Suresh have a good smile. <laughs> exactly. Uh, then we have Khalid, who's uh, from Egypt as well. Hi, Khalid. Hi, hi, Khalid. <laughs> And he was like four or five in the morning when he started the call with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So, Kisti, Khalid, uh, Khalid is on. Jessalyn, Mengi. Yeah. Mengi, Can Taki, everyone please on your camera? Ben, Gita, come on. Let's see your face and your smile. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the session today. Hi, Buni. Hello. Ah, uh, Kisti is there. Yes, hello. Natasha. <laughs> she got so many friends here, Natasha. Taki, Steven, Jasmine. Gita, are you coming on? If that's all, then I will do a capture now. Yeah, let's all have right. your best smile, everybody. Okay, all smile. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so everybody. Much, Thank you for listening to me. I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, no, we enjoyed your talk very much. It was very insightful. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. And, Bye. And also a last message to everybody here. If you know of anybody who's unemployed and would like to reset their lives, please tell them about get employed or today. Ask them to sign up because it will be really, really helpful to them. Trust me. Okay. Thank right. you so much. Back to you, Colin. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much again, Dr. Sharifah. I think uh, all of us learned at least something from, from lot, this. A lot, and a lot. Lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anyone else want to say something? Uh, Suresh, uh, Juliana, or anyone? Annalise? Yeah, I'd rather wear the white hat. <laughs> the next time when you join Zoom, make sure you wear your white hat, okay? You wear the white cap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you very much, Doctor. All right, hope to see you again in our next session. Thank you so much, thank you. Happy right. lunch to everybody. Take care. Lunch on the way, okay, Rani? <laughs> One day. <laughs> no, no, like when we have when we have sessions instead of because we're all around them, we can have lunch together. So we are we we grab grab food to you. <laughs> yeah, we must find grab to be our sponsor next time. Yeah, yeah, we grab food to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Dr. Sharifa, and thanks everybody. Thank you, thank you. Right. Bye, -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.